And we know the story about Daniel Domlevo, don't we? We do. So Daniel Domlevo is the Auditor General. And sometime last year, there was a problem. Uh, was there a problem? I mean, at the beginning, actually. So the story of Daniel Domlevo must take us back a little bit to 2016. Now, he was the Auditor General, and his position is an important role to audit all government agencies, including the government itself, including the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. So it's a very powerful position. He was appointed um, in the 11th hour of President Muhammad's administration. That means he was appointed after President Muhammad had lost power, and uh, he became the Auditor General. Um, the new government inherited him, and at the beginning, there was some friction between Daniel Domlevo and the Audit Service Board. There were some investigations, some procurement issues here and there, and uh, Daniel Domlevo found himself writing to the president and making some clarifications. Okay, that matter was okay, and then they continued working. But it appears that Daniel Domlevo and the Audit Service Board continue to have a lot of friction. However, it blossomed completely in the election year of 2020, uh, in the last quarter, when a, a letter was fired out of the president's secretary's hand and into Daniel Domlevo, informing him that he should proceed on leave. Daniel Domlevo responded to that letter brutally. And that set the agenda for the conversation. Now, as I said, we're going to discuss this dispassionately. And uh, for those of us who are on one side, because we are on one side, and for those who are on the opposite side, what I'm going to do tonight is to present to viewers the, uh, the facts of the matter. And um, we know that our responsibility here is not so much to be... Um, it's not so much to be uh, neutral, uh, because we are not neutral on this matter, uh, but it is to be impartial. So what I'm going to do right now is to present you the facts of the report presented by the uh, uh, Auditor Audit Service Board Chairman. It is, it is important uh, that Daniel Domlevo has actually responded to some of these allegations, and we're going to walk you through all of that so that we can together understand clearly what has happened. And if you want a verdict, we'll give you a verdict. If you don't want a verdict, we'll leave you to take the verdict yourself. So this is the report that came out today. Now, Daniel Domlevo has been on leave, and he's due to return to work tomorrow, which is Wednesday, uh, I believe is the 4th of March is Thursday, so Wednesday the 3rd of March. Wednesday the 3rd of March, he's due to return to work. Okay. Now, Dom Levos, uh, just before he goes to work, this comes up. Let's put the slides on and uh, let's deal with it very quickly. Okay. So slide number one is going to appear on your screen now. There it is. Okay. So let's read. This is the Auditor General, uh, Professor Edward Duajiman, writing to Daniel Dom Levo. Duajiman on the left, Daniel Dom Levo on the right. That's a, a face of of an Asante Kotoko and Hearts or a Real Madrid and a Barcelona. Let's go. It appears the controversy surrounding Ghana's Auditor General, Daniel Domlevo, may be far from over. In a rather strange twist of fate, the Audit Service Board has issued a statement indicating that Mr. Domlevo is due for retirement, according to investigations by the Board. The Auditor General was born in 1960 and not 1961. Okay, let's look at the next slide. It's going to come up in a minute. In a letter addressed to Mr. Domlevo, who is currently on mandatory leave, the Audit Service Board said the clarification is based on personal records available to the Public Service of Ghana. The development follows a series of letters between the Chairman of the Audit Service Board, Professor Edward Dua Ajeman, and Mr. Do Mr. Mr. Daniel Domlevo. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. The board, in an earlier letter today, February 26, 2021, also said it had discovered some irregularities and anomalies and requested an explanation. The board alleged that records at the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, provided by the Auditor General, indicated that his date of birth was 1960 when he joined the scheme on October 1, 1978. So note that, note that, viewers. Uh, let's move from the next, the second line. It says, oh, sorry, let's go back, let's go back to it. Okay, let's, let's move from the second line. The board alleged that records at the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, provided by the Auditor General, indicated that his date of birth was 1960 when he joined the scheme on October 1, 1978. Let's look at the next slide. Uh, it goes on to say that, again, the record also showed that the hometown of Mr. Daniel Domlevo is... Agbetofe in Togo, making him non ghanaian But on October 25, now this is the interesting thing. So in 1978, Don Levo provided some information to the audit service. Then in 1993, some amendments were made to the information. So on October 25, 1993, some changes were made. While the date of birth changed to June 1, 1961, the hometown of the Auditor General uh, was now... Ada in the greater Accra region. 
So this is the allegation from uh, Professor Edward Do Ajeman, alleging that amendments had been made to the data information of Daniel Domelevo at the, at the, at the, uh, at the national uh, basis, whether it's SNIT or whatever, that the changes had been made. He, he, read, he, made, he provided some information in 1978. In 1993, that information was changed. Two sets of information, his hometown and then uh, his date of birth. Okay, let's move on. Don, Don Malevo responds. Let's move on. Put it, put it on the other one. Okay. But explaining the purported anomalies, so Daniel Don Malevo has had a right of explanation. That's very important, and that's why we are excited about what is happening right now, because Daniel Don Malevo has spoken. So for you viewers, when we are done, you have to make a choice as to who you want to believe, and it's entirely uh, your choice is not ours. Okay. But explaining the purported anomalies, Mr. Daniel Domlevo said his grandfather was a native of Ada in the greater Accra region, but migrated to Togo and stayed at Agbetofe. On the issue of his date of birth, Mr. Domlevo said he noticed that 1960 was a mistake. When I now quoting him, he said, when I checked my information in the baptismal register of the Catholic Church in Adema, Ad Ademra, Adiemra, he says, when I checked my information in the baptismal register of the Catholic Church in Adiemra. So, Mr. Domlevo agrees that there has been an amendment of the changes of his age. He agrees that some amendments have occurred. But he's saying to you that though the earlier one was a mistake, the one that makes him born in 1960 was a mistake. And the one that makes him born in 1961 is correct. He found out because the baptismal certificates register of the Catholic Church in Adiembra recorded him as having been born in 1961 and not 1960, which is the information he provided to the public service in 1978. In 1993, he amends that information based on new information that comes to him. Does he swear an affidavit? That's the big question to ask. Does he swear an affidavit? Does he go to a notary's public? These are matters of law, my friend. These are matters of law. Does he swear an affidavit? Does he go to a notary's public to make these changes? Because if I, Paul Adumotri, I find that my baptismal certificate from St. Catherine's Catholic Church in Bermakam has amended my age uh, from the age that I believe I am to an age that makes me one year younger, I have the power to change it. So I go to a notary's public and I tell them I swear by the oath, the document is provided. So if you go to SNIT, uh, uh, a few years now, when am I about, I'm about to be sworn in as president of Ghana, you go to Senate and you say, hey, hey, wait a minute. How old is the president of Ghana? He says, no. In, in uh, 1980, he wrote something. And in 2022, he wrote something else. And then you should see the attached uh, swearing in. Uh, you should see the attached affidavit, which is signed by me, sworn on oath that the amendments could be made. I don't know whether Daniel Domelevo, in, in making these amendments in 1993, did the swearing of oath. If he didn't do it, too bad. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. So he gives more information. Mr. Domelevo gives more information about himself. He says, I was born in Kumase, and my mother, in less than three weeks after my birth, returned to Kweu Adiemra with me. And I was baptized in June 1961. Mr. Domelevo added, however, the audit service board, in its latest document dated March 2, said the explanation given makes the date of birth and Ghanaian nationality even more doubtful and clearly establishes that you have made false statements contrary to law. Mm. It's getting serious, isn't it? I don't know whether the uh, learned attorney general is going to be involved in this matter. Okay, let's read the last one again. Let's read the last one again. Okay, let's get this into, into, into the psyche well. This is Daniel Dom Level speaking. He's being quoted in the letter that he wrote. He says, I was born in Kumasi. And my mother, in less than three weeks after my birth, which will be the same year, returned to Kweu Adiemra with me, and I was baptized in June 1961. Mr. Domlevo added, however, the audit service board, but he says he was baptized in June 1961. Uh, so his mother moved in three weeks. So when was he born? Maybe he was born in, sometime in June and... He was baptized at the end of June. Three weeks is within the space of a month because we are hearing that his date of birth is June. So, yes, so he was born when and migrated. There was a three weeks interval. It's possible that three weeks could still be the same month. So if he was born on the 2nd of June, uh, three weeks is still in June. That, that's understandable. Okay, 
So Mr. Domlevo added, however, the Audit Service Board in its latest document, dated 2nd March, said the explanation given makes the date of birth and Ghanaian nationality even more doubtful and clearly establishes that you have made false statements contrary to law. Is there another one? Let's have a look at it. There's another one. Okay, it goes on. Due to this, the board said Mr. Domlevo is deemed to have retired in June 2020. By a copy of this letter, the board is informing the president, who is your appointing authority, to take the necessary action. Additionally, the board is making available to the president all the relevant documents at our disposal. The letter concluded. This sounds like a threat, isn't it? It says, due to this, the board said Mr. Damlevo is deemed to have retired in June 2020. By a copy of this letter, the board is informing the president, who is your appointing authority, to take the necessary action. Additionally, the board is making available to the president all the relevant documents at our disposal. The letter concluded. I'm guessing that's the end of it. Is that okay? Yeah. Wow. This is interesting, isn't it? It's quite interesting. So, uh, Daniel Domlevo is uh, now in the mix. Let's run a little bit of commentary, and this is where uh, positions are going to be taken for and against. Civil society largely loves Dom Levo. And why is it so? It is so because Dom Levo indicated at the beginning that he was going to be the watchdog that people hoped that the Auditor General would be. Uh, all through our democracy since 1992, we have seen that um, the, um, the separation of powers bit works, but the checks and balances bit don't work. That's why some people are excited about what they are seeing from Parliament, etc., etc. So we have all been waiting for the day when the checks and balances will really work, when some state institutions would have, as they say, the balls to take on the bigger balls of the bigger players in the political space, notably the executive, who is the biggest player in the political space. So for this reason, when Daniel Domlevo indicated who he was, what he was about, what he wanted to do, he was celebrated by civil society. Since then, civil society has had... Uh, they've had his back. They've covered him up, uh, not illegally, but they've supported him. That's what I mean. So civil society is for Daniel Domlevo. That's, that's fair. Now, we took a position against Daniel Domlevo when he said the president cannot ask him to proceed on leave because we thought that under the law, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. That the president uh, can ask you to proceed on leave if he sees that your leave has expired and you are not on good terms with the audit service board. The president can. And indeed, we have seen that the president's actions were carried out. He asked him to proceed on leave, and he actually did proceed on leave. It's now time for him to return. That's fair. Okay. Now, if this is true, should civil society uh, ignore the falsification, the alleged falsification of data, uh, which is itself a major issue, and say that Dom Levo should be allowed to work, even his contract be extended, that's a question we put to you. Uh, those who, do, who think that Dom Levo has not done such a great job, they think that it is terrible for an auditor general, uh, a citizen vigilante of sorts, uh, an apostle uh, of democracy, an apologist of transparency, to himself falsify documents behind the scenes, to himself falsify documents after dusk. When the sun goes down, the apostle of transparency the apologist of uh, accountability now falsifies documents after dusk. That's the concern. Should people look at that and say that, oh, how, Dom Levo, how can you do that? Uh, what are we saying? Now, we are not saying anything today. We are not saying anything today, but this is the story. This is a Dom Levo story. Tomorrow is a big day. And if you are watching this on Wednesdays, today is a big day. Would he proceed to work? The information indicates that the president's office has been furnished with the documents and the president is the appointing authority and we will see what he does with the information, the allegation that Dom Levo is 61 and he's not 60. Dom Levo agrees that some documentation was changed, but the critical factor here is that there's a process to do that. There's a legal procedure to do that. You must go to the notary's public. You must. For a person who is working in the audit service, you must know that you must go to the notary public. And the lawyer over there will take it and you will swear an affidavit and you will do a change of name, change of dates, change of this, change of that. You must know that you should do that. Dom Levo should know that he should do that. If all these allegations are true, and as he himself says, that yes, there was an amendment, but the amendment was to correct the earlier error. This is Dom Levo's story. There was an amendment, but he says the amendment is to correct the earlier error. 
Whoa. If there was an earlier error, that can happen to anyone. You can correct the error, but there are procedures laid down for you so to do. Did he observe those procedures? Fa la 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 la. Okay.